Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network present the Discover Your Mission series. Now I had been brought up without any prayer, without Bible, without church, nothing of that kind. And so when my father died, I became suicidally depressed. I, I had no desire to live. And yet, by the grace of God, uh, whenever I got to the point of actually taking my life, I always had this interior conviction that if I took my life, I would simply find it again on the other side and it would be permanent misery. But it wasn't until I became a wife and a mother and I began to try and pass my faith on to my children that I realized that everything I knew about Jesus was memorized doctrine. I was a good man, I was a good father, I was instilling the sacraments into my family. Uh, I was definitely not intentional, I was stuck rope in my family. But what kind of strength did he have? Jackie did not just have a strength of body or baseball skill. He had a strength inside of his spirit, a courageous meekness that empowered him to play the game. And I tell him what is going on with me and he's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, no, no. I think this is like some sort of miracle, dude. And he's like, okay, you know, of course, but I'll believe it when I see it, honey. You've been trying to quit and you've been saying this and saying that. And I'm, a, you know, he, his big line to me is, you shouldn't say things <laughs> because I never follow through on them. And so this was week after week, month after month. He is looking at me like, this is a miracle. There is no way that you on your own could have done this. So we are called to sing. All of us are called to sing. All of us are called to express ourselves and join our voice into the unity of the church. Uh, often with my choirs, I, I ask them to listen to each other, to listen to the, the sound that they make together as one. That's what we're aiming for through the harmony or unison, we're aiming for a one sound. You need to decide, what are you gonna participate in? Are you gonna participate in the historic Christian idea of the altar of sacrifice, which is in the Eucharist or not? Welcome to the Sowing Hope Podcast. This is a show all about implanting hope in our hearts. I'm Bill Snyder, joined by my friend Ann DeSantis. We're glad you're here for our uplifting conversation about faith and how it sustains our hearts through all the seasons of life. Thanks for walking with us. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to this Sowing Hope episode and it is another uh, cold and uh, drizzly night here in Wisconsin. Uh, it is uh, it is one of those evenings where you just want to cuddle up underneath the fire with a blanket and a good book. Uh, but we are here, uh, nevertheless, on uh, Sowing Hope, and hopefully you can cuddle up and uh, listen to us for the next hour as we uh, talk with you and share with you all about um, our faith and our lives and all the many things that are uh, going on in the world today, we just got a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff to, a lot of stuff to do, uh, on tonight's program. Uh, as always, I want to bring in my co-host Ann DeSantis. Uh, Ann, how are you this evening? And I know I'm watching you unmute the button right now. So how are you? Oh, I'm awesome, Bill. Thank you so much. And again, Happy New Year to everyone. I know I'm gonna probably keep saying Happy New Year for a while so that we can remember that it's uh, 2021 and not 2020 anymore. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Happy New Year. It's one of those <laughs> things, right? Uh, but it is uh, a, uh, a wonderful year so far. We're off to a good start. And uh, I know we have a wonderful guest with us uh, tonight, as, uh, as always. So we wanted to tell us a little bit about him, if you don't mind. Oh, I sure don't mind, because he's a good friend of, of ours. Um, he's not only been a guest here, but also a guest on your other podcast, uh, Young Catholics Respond, and also on the Journeys in Faith TV on Fiat Ministry Network. He's a good friend of Fiat Ministry Network because he has his own show there, too. So I welcome uh, Alan J. Smith. Alan, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, whoop, I got Alan muted. I, I mute Alan. <laughs> Alan will unmute here and just there he is. No, thanks for having me on the show today. It's um, I love the title of the show, Sowing Hope. And I know uh, with our conversation today, we will sow a little bit of hope into uh, the listeners' lives because we're going to share some timely wisdom from the venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. That's right. Uh, Alan, you do so much work uh, with uh, Fulton J. Sheen. You have uh, an impressive, amazing, a few books out, uh, but you also uh, have, have really done an amazing job cataloging uh, his work and, and his life. Uh, you're, you're so very close to uh, Fulton Sheen, and it's somebody uh, who had an amazing impact in America, um, and he was just a wonderful figure for so many to follow. I always love looking at uh, your background uh, there, Alan, because you have so many different photos, uh, posters of Fulton Sheen all over uh, your office. And, uh, you know, if our listeners uh, could see it, they would see an, just an amazing, impressive library and office. So uh, I would love for you just to share with us how how you uh, journeyed into Fulton Sheen, because I think it's a great story for, for people to uh, come to come to know you and your faith and and how Fulton Sheen has been such an impact in your life and and how he's shaped your ministry. Yes, um, you know when I tell the story about how uh, Fulton Sheen appeared in my life, I say to people that uh, it is uh, a love that I found later in life. Uh, it wasn't until I was. Uh, almost in my, well, I was in my 40s. It's actually uh, was in the year 2009. And my good wife and I were dropping our daughter off uh, to a college campus, a small little Catholic university in Canada called Our Lady Seat of Wisdom. And uh, again, being the good dad, I wanted to make sure my daughter uh, was in a good dorm. Uh, I wanted to see all of the uh, eligible young men that were walking through the campus and I wanted to make sure that uh, my daughter was safe and so I was uh, seeing her to um, again her room and um, making sure she was settled in and my good wife at the time was in the library of the school she wanted to see uh, what books they had where she would be studying uh, as every good parent we want our children to study and um, again see what uh, books are there on the shelf and uh, the librarian was uh, discarding a few old tattered books. And um, again, there was a box that said free books. And so uh, my wife, of course, saw free books and uh, she went right to the table. And there she picked up a couple books. But one of the books that she picked up was Fulton Sheen's 1949 classic called Peace of Soul. And uh, when we were driving home uh, that day, she shared with me uh, the book and she says, we've got a couple hours to, um, you know, enjoy this book. It was a five hour drive from our home to the campus. And I said, OK, I'm all ears. Read to me. And she opened that book. And the very first line of that book, Peace of Soul, was this. Fulton Sheen said, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And just after that first line, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved, Fulton Sheen had my attention uh, because it was resonating in me, this love of souls. Um, I was a bit of an on-fire, charismatic uh, youth. Um, uh, again, my mom and dad were involved with the charismatic renewal, and so they brought us along. And so that language of saving souls and bringing souls to Christ um, was a part of my childhood, especially my youth. And so when I heard that, I said, wow, Fulton Sheen is speaking my language, saving souls. And who even talks 
this way today. Do we have anybody coming up to us and saying, oh, I want to go try to save some souls. I want to try to bring some souls to Christ. Um, probably not. Probably not. Um, it's a language that we don't really speak a great deal, sometimes even in the church, sadly. But uh, again, Fulton Sheen got my attention through that book. And my good wife and I got home and I asked her the next day, could I borrow that book? I want to read it a little bit. And she said, no, you can go and read your own Fulton Sheen book. I'm sure he's written many. And so I looked him up on the internet and realized that he wrote 66 books. And I said, wow, what a great writer. And I didn't know anything about his life story. I didn't know anything about Fulton Sheen. Never saw him on television, never read one of his books, never heard one of his recordings. Uh, so I began my journey with Fulton Sheen and uh, picked a book called Victory Over Vice, which is a, pe a book he penned in 1939. And that got my attention because I thought, well, I've got some sins and probably one or two of the seven deadly sins. Maybe there's some answers in this book. Uh, but I started to realize that um, I had a little bit of all the seven deadly sins. And Fulton Sheen provided an antidote for the seven deadly sins in the seven last words. And so uh, that little book uh, got me on a journey where I all of a sudden within a year had read 20 of uh, Fulton Sheen's 66 books. They were that good. So uh, again, it was that little line, that first line of the Fulton Sheen book, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved, that started me on that journey. And uh, that was in 2009. And uh, here we are <laughs> 10 years later, uh, and then some. And uh, I've got uh, Sheen uh, Apostolic Outreach that uh, is touching millions of lives every year. So uh, God is good. God is good. I love your story. I love when you tell the story about that book and dropping your daughter off at college. Uh, that's one that I don't think I'll ever forget. And you are so encouraging when it comes to learning about Bishop Sheen. I have your bio. I would love for people to hear about some of the other things that you're doing just so that they can know how to reach you and just all the great things that you've done since um, 2009. Uh, so you are uh, a current director and on the advisory board in several positions, the executive director of the Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen Mission Society of Canada. That's one. You are also a board member of the Foundation of Prayer for Priests. I know we're going to talk about all of these. Um, also a board member for three years with the Archbishop Fulton John Sheen Foundation in Peoria, Illinois, and the founder of Al Smith, the Gas Man Limited. Now, there's also another list here, which I'll just go through quickly, is that your media work includes being the founder of the, uh, the Archbishop or the Bishop Sheen Today .com website, which is the website that promotes the work of Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, the editor of the book, The Cries of Jesus from the Cross, a Sheen anthology compiled by Al Smith, and that's from Sophia Institute Press. The editor of the book, Lord, Teach Us to Pray, a Sheen anthology com compiled by Al Smith, published by Sophia I Institute Press, and a writer at Catholic Exchange Magazine, the host and producer of Your Life is Worth Living radio program on Radio Maria Canada, and the host and producer of the Holy Rosary program, and Bishop Sheen presents Show Heard Weekly on FM 98.5. CKWR. Just a couple more. Um, the host of the Hungry for More show on Fiat Ministry Network. Hi to our friends there. And your YouTube channel uh, it looks like is Alan Smith and the School of Sheen. So thank you so much for doing such awesome work. I really and truly appreciate everything that you do. Oh, you're welcome. And um, my wife says I'm a bit of a renaissance man, because to add to that resume, I am a plumber. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm known as the gas man up in Canada because I fix gas piping. And so your gas stove, your gas dryer, uh, the barbecue, the furnace, the water heater, uh, that's what I work on, uh, you know, six days a week. And uh, again, it's my livelihood, uh, but people in my community know me as the pipe padre 
because uh, every Sunday I go into a local radio station and share the wisdom of Bishop Sheen and the Holy Rosary, the Chaplet of Mercy, and the lives of the saints. So um, I'm, again, a Renaissance man in that I get to be a plumber, a writer, a radio host, a retreat director. Uh, the list is endless, it seems, because God is big. <laughs> he's big. Um, you know, he likes to grow things and grow it well. Um, and so, again, he's blessing me. He's blessing me in my many, uh, I say, adventures, but they're ventures. So uh, God is good. Yeah, it, and it's proof, Alan, that he calls plumbers uh, to do his work. I mean, you know, I mean, that's the amazing thing. He just calls everybody to do his work. And, and uh, you know, he, he calls plumbers, gas men, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, people who are, you know, Uber drivers, too. So y- there's something beautiful about that, and, and there's nothing that God cannot accomplish in, in, in a soul, right? I mean, and, and that's kind of like some of the wisdom from Fulton Sheen, too, right? Like— he he always talked about as you were saying the you know saving of souls the redemption of souls, and so uh, I, you know I would love it if you you know share with us a little bit more about that because I think we're in desperate need of that today. I mean we're we're walking around looking at this and it's like how do we even begin to save souls in today's world? You know. Mm-hmm. Well, there's um, two. Uh, parts to that answer i think sometimes you know we have to try to save souls but we have to save our own and um again there's a scripture i think i don't know um where it is exactly but when you save a soul you actually save your own so if there's this this uh, sense of they're connected so uh work on trying to bring people to christ and save a soul but also work on your own soul work on your own soul and this was the touch tone of bishop sheen Um, He would um, come to the radio station and he knew there would be four or five million people listening. Uh, He'd go to the television station and knew we'd have an audience of 30 million people. But he wanted to touch souls and help people to journey in faith to, um, you know, find out that their life is worth living, that God has a plan for each and every one of them. And uh, that plan is to get to heaven. And so, um, and he wanted to give us the tools or uh, open the map up and point us um, to go down this road and stay away from that uh, area, but he would give us life lessons. And uh, that was the beauty of his teaching, is that you knew he cared about us um, and that he wanted to, uh, again, kind of have a conversation where, yeah, let's talk about the world. Let's talk about what's facing us every day. But let's also bring in, uh, again, a conversation about our Lord. Because remember, he was like us in all things but sin. So he knew what heartache was. He knew what hard work was. He knew what persecution was. All of the, the pains and the sorrows that we're experiencing in this life, our Lord experienced those pains also. And so he would remind us of that. And uh, that was, again, uh, why we kept coming back week after week after week, uh, because he was giving us a lesson plan. And what I've been doing in my ministry is uh, revealing his lesson plans. And uh, I like to say, you know, there's all these different programs that are out there to help people. And um, we hear of the 12-step program, many people that are, um, you know, having addiction problems. Uh, find a 12-step program, and they're very um, passionate about the program and know that if you follow the program, good things happen. And uh, I like to say that Bishop Sheen had three seven-step programs that I've kind of figured out, and I try to share those seven-step programs with the world. And um, and uh, again, we can talk about these seven-step programs today on the show, and um, we may just scratch the surface, but um, this is what I've found in my uh, research of reading, uh, you know, close to um, almost all the 66 books that Fulton Sheen wrote. I have time on my hands, so I'm able to read these and to read some of his radio transcripts. I realized uh, he was truly a catechist and that he um, laid out a catechesis. And if you listen to him long enough, you would start to connect the dots. And so I realized that Fulton Sheen had two great passions. He loved to talk about the Eucharist. And of course, he lived that by uh, praying his holy hour. And so uh, people who know Fulton Sheen know that he 
uh, for 62 years, never missed praying a holy hour. And uh, Fulton Sheen also had a great devotion to the cross and our Lord's seven last words. Uh, and he actually, for 58 consecutive years, uh, spoke on our Lord's passion, his seven last words in his famous Good Friday homilies and his radio addresses. And so I realized he loved the Eucharist and he loved the passion. He loved the seven last words. And I thought there's something in the seven last words that I think everyone can relate to. And uh, again, um, he had a famous line that he would say, and it was a line from St. Um, uh, St. Um, It'll come to me in a second. Um, but one of those famous saints, it'll come to me as soon as I say it. But he'd say, I've learned more from the crucifix than any book. And it was St. Thomas Aquinas. And uh, when Fulton Sheen studied in university, he studied St. Thomas Aquinas. But that one line, I've learned more from the crucifix than any book, he presented the crucifix to us. And he would say, you're going to learn more from our Lord's passion, his seven last words, than any book you'll ever read. And um, it is so true. And so we unpackage the seven last words every year with a different theme. And I started to pick up on this. Um, and so I'll just give you an example. There's nine uh, that I can recall just off the top of my head. In 1933, he gave an address just on the seven last words. And then in 1935, he gave seven presentations on the mass and broke the seven parts of the mass into the seven last words and kind of connected the dots. And then the following year, he wrote on the Beatitudes and the seven last words. And then the next year, he wrote about the seven deadly sins and the seven last words. And the next year, he wrote in 1940 about the seven virtues and the seven last sins, seven deadly sins. No, sorry, the seven last words. Um, but again, year after year after year, he would give homilies and reflections for weeks on weeks about how the seven last words can be tied into everything, everything. And uh, again, always pointing to the cross. And you started to realize, ah, there's something in the cross that uh, can help me, that can help me. And again, it is the power that uh, he won the victory over sin. And uh, again, he's saying, you struggling with sin, addictions, problems? The answer is in the cross. The answer is in the cross. Um, and again, I, I can't say it enough that um, the best seven-step program is the seven last words. And um, again, I don't know if you're feeling uh, like you want to add something to that or if you have uh, any ideas about uh, your own experience, uh, especially during the Lenten season, to spend a little time meditating on the seven last words. But uh, this is what I try to give in presentations to say, you know, just take those. I want to say it's the greatest sermon ever preached. And there's no better preacher than the dying Christ. And there's no better sermon than the seven last words. Because in that homily, that Sermon on the Mount, that Sermon on Mount Calvary, uh, is a great wealth of knowledge and love. And um, again, I'll unpackage that in a few moments. But um, again, we're in the show together. So there's three of us. So I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to, uh, you know, share from your heart too. Yeah, I just love hearing you talk about him. And I've learned to even love him more. And in fact, you were the one that invited me to order some books from Sophia Press. And uh, that's such a wonderful uh, publisher. And they have so many wonderful books on uh, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Now, I know that you've also learned a lot about his life. And I think his life is also so fascinating because he got a taste of what it was like to be very famous, didn't he? And he, he also learned what it was like to be rejected during that time too. I know toward the end of his show and when things were starting to kind of wind down, I uh, wondered if you could just share a little bit about his life, because he really does have a, a, a beautiful life to share with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you read um, Fulton Sheen's autobiography, and his autobiography is called Treasures in Clay, you'll see how our Lord took a farm boy from Illinois and made him a saint. And his story is quite um, interesting in that 
he grew, um, he was born in El Paso, Illinois, um, a little village outside of Peoria. Um, again, the father and mother moved the family into the city because um, they both wanted to have their children have a good Catholic education. And he went to one of the parochial schools in Peoria and uh, again, went to high school there too. Um, and again, he wasn't, um, you know, the best of the debating team. He was a, a smaller in frame. He, he never really had great health. Um, and again, he, if you, you know, ever see pictures of Fulton Sheen, you'll see that he was quite thin and of course had some lung issues when he was younger. And um, again, was just not uh, what I call a strapping, strong gentleman, but uh, still, again, a small, um, you know, farm boy from a small community who had to work hard at his studies. And um, again, he was very good um, academic when he started to really uh, pour into the studies and he wanted to be a good student. And of course, he had this beautiful call to the priesthood ever since he was a little boy. And of course, this great trust of Our Lady. Um, and it goes, it happens, um, I'd like to say naturally in that his mother uh, when she brought him for baptism, uh, she put Fulton Sheen in front of the little statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary and said, I consecrate my child to you and dedicated uh, Fulton Sheen to the care of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And uh, when Fulton Sheen had his first Holy Communion, uh, he rededicated himself to the Blessed Virgin Mary. So he had this great humility about him. And of course, uh, through high school, he um, he realized that he wanted to be a priest, and so uh, when he was uh, had the opportunity to go to the seminary, he did, and uh, he did well in his studies, and uh, so much so that when he was ordained, uh, his bishop asked him to continue his studies at Louvain University, and there he uh, was so brilliant that he was the first American to win the Cardinal Mercier Award, uh, which is kind of like a super doctorate. And so, um, again, he was uh, being recognized for his brilliance, and uh, he had many teaching uh, offers presented to him, and uh, he had to pick his, what university he was going to teach at, uh, but his bishop called him home and said, I want you to be an uh, associate pastor in a small, rundown parish in Peoria, and he obeyed his bishop, and uh, he did that for a year. And uh, then the bishop called him into his office and said, um, I just wanted to see if you'd be obedient to me. Uh, I want you now to go teach at the Catholic University of America. And he went there and, of course, taught for 20 plus years. And while he was teaching at the Catholic University of America, he was penning books and, of course, going to the radio station, um, you know, each week and presenting his Catholic Hour reflections. And of course, um, people started to pay attention to him. And uh, after 22 years on the radio, uh, it's almost like the Lord was grooming him for television. And uh, then, of course, in 1951, he uh, was ordained a bishop and then, of course, started his television series, uh, which he won two Emmy Awards for. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where he got everyone's attention. Uh, but the most outstanding person personality on television and uh, again had a great run on television um, and then um, of course had some adversity uh, and the adversity was I believe a lot of times caused by professional jealousy um, again people were looking saying why is this you know not scrawny farm boy from a Peoria rising to great heights but still I think there was that sense of jealousy and uh, of course, there's the documented um, tensions between him and um, the Cardinal at the time, uh, Cardinal Spellman. And um, it's, um, again, there was a friction there. And um, again, Fulton Sheen was then, um, I'm not saying demoted, but he was uh, assigned as a bishop in Rochester. And Rochester mm -hmm. was considered maybe not the best diocese. Um, it had issues. And so, um, and it was in the northern part of the New York state. And so kind of almost like a Siberia assignment. And, um, but he just said, you know, I'm going to go where I'm sent. I'm going to obey. And uh, her th his three years in Rochester wasn't uh, the best years. Um, 
they weren't. He had difficulty uh, because there's something about being a preacher on television or radio mm -hmm. and teaching at the university than running a diocese. And I pray for bishops all the time. It is a tough job to administer um, the flock and to keep the diocese going. So um, as soon as he could, <laughs> he retired and, uh, you know, he met the age, he became 75 and that he submitted his resignation to the Vatican. And then he got to spend the last 10 years of his life doing what he loved. And that was giving retreats uh, to priests and seminarians because Fulton Sheen knew that the key to the renovation of the church and the salvation of souls was to renew the priesthood, pour his life into the priesthood. So if he could help develop and help make another 10, 15, 20 Fulton Sheens, the church will be in a better place. And so uh, he poured his heart and soul into his retreats, his priestly retreats, uh, to especially help the priest develop a relationship with our Eucharistic Lord and to pray a daily holy hours. So uh, again, you can see how God took a farm boy from Peoria who um, wasn't going to amount to much it seemed, but yet again, fostered his devotion to the Blessed Mother. And of course he uh, grew into, uh, I like to say, um, a saint, a saint, um, and the church, I know one day will declare him a saint, but uh, just a little bit of a backstory there. So, um, so our listeners can understand the journey of Fulton Sheen. I, I love to hear it. I, I could hear you talk for hours on him. It's so interesting. And I, it's interesting to me too, that you said he went to Rochester and then retired. My question would be, where did he retire? Did he stay in the Rochester area or did he go somewhere else? Yeah, he went back to New York City mm. um, because he, of course, uh, knew the city well. He kind of, um, it was a good hub, if you want to call it that. It's easy to fly out of New York City with the uh, numerous airports. And um, again, he kind of knew the neighborhood, knew uh, the people. And, um, you know, again, he was comfortable there. So he moved back to New York City, um, you know, took up residence in his um his humble, it's like a three room apartment. And um, again, one of the rooms was his chapel, his personal chapel. Uh, the other one was his bedroom and of course his study. So uh, humble apartment down in New York, um, in Manhattan. And um, again, that was his base, his hub. But he flew all over, uh, you know, America giving priestly retreats. So, and uh, again, still did a little bit of television work, uh, maybe not as much as he was used to, but um, still writing his weekly newspaper column. And uh, I think sometimes people forget that he penned a weekly newspaper column for 30 years, from 1949 to the year of his death, 1979, uh, Fulton Sheen was writing um, a weekly column. Um, and of course, just um, talking about the issues of the day, but always bringing, uh, of course, the message of Christ. And um, again, the glories of the church, I like to say, because, you know, I think Fulton Sheen, we talked about, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. I believe that Fulton Sheen has hundreds of thousands of souls uh, on his record, um, mm -hmm. that uh, he has brought so many people to the church. Um, because again, he was just uh, exuding this joy that you would look at him and say, he's a happy man. He's got something that um, I think I want, I want. And I think this is what he was always pointing to was his joy came from our Eucharistic Lord and his sacramental life. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing he was able to do as a priest, especially was he was able to minister to us because I like to say he had a secret weapon or he had an advantage in that he was hearing our confessions. And so he was, uh, he knew what was troubling us. And of course, was able to propose uh, solutions to our, our many sorrows. And uh, again, I think people will say, why was he so wise? He knew what was troubling us. He had that secret weapon of hearing our confession. So again, uh, my mission, I think a lot of times is just to kind of share these secrets with the world to say, here's what he's done in my life. Here's how he brought me closer to Christ. Uh, these were the books that changed my life, or at least changed my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want to do is present these books to these people to say, uh, these books work for me. 
and they help me. They help build my character. They help me to uh, fall in love with God, uh, you know, because I think a lot of times we're casual in our um, relationship with God. We take God for granted. We kind of sometimes ride on that um, that train that everybody gets to heaven and that everything's going to be okay. And, um, you know, Fulton Sheen kind of reminded me to say, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Uh, you can lose your soul. So uh, work at getting your soul uh, to heaven. And here's a few uh, things that will help you uh, along the way. And that's what I've tried to do in the two books that I've put out, Lord Teach Us to Pray and The Cries of Jesus on the Cross. These are field manuals. These are instructional manuals that will help you develop the holy habit of prayer and to give you an idea of how to look at the world through the lens of the cross. So um, again, I can speak for hours and hours and hours about his books because they bring me so much joy. And he he answered the riddles of life, <laughs> the riddles of life. And that's, um, you know, I think sometimes if you look at Fulton Sheen, and, you know, our Lord had 12 apostles, and we read what the apostles, um, their testimony. But if you miss the first 12 apostles, listen to Fulton Sheen, and you'll truly know that he is apostle of the Lord. So, um, again, his love for Jesus is infectious, it truly is. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. And you're getting me even more excited to read about him and to learn about his life. Um, you know, it goes back to what you said about unless souls are saved, you know, nothing is saved. What have you learned about that particularly? Like, is there a life lesson that we can take uh, from what you learned about saving souls? Um, what are some of those key things that you learned that you can share with us? Right. Well, I think it's the sense of, um, how do I put it? Um, we have to uh, I'd like to say, acknowledge a few things. Um, Fulton Sheen was very big on sharing the incarnation, the story of God so loved the world that he took on human flesh and dwelt among us. And just think about that for a moment. God so loved the world that he came into the world to die for us. And he would make that very clear. Just meditate on those two things, especially the incarnation, and of, of course, our Lord laying down his life for his friends. Um, that everybody that was born over the course of history came into this world to live. You know, I want to live. But our Lord, his sole mission was to come into this world to die. That was his mission. That was his mission. And then you start to just say, you start to get, become in awe of God. He loved me enough that he came to save the world and to die. Okay, now you've got my attention. Now you've got my attention. And I think this is were just two stories that he wanted to build upon. And then he would say, okay, uh, now that you get that, let's talk about everybody else that's involved uh, in this storyline. And he would point to the Blessed Virgin Mary a great deal. And he'd start to um, you know, present to us how if you want to be formed, uh, to become a Christian, a better Christian, he would recommend the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I think this was one thing that so many people struggle with is um, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yet he wrote a book called The World's First Love, which he admitted was his favorite book to write uh, because he just knew that uh, if you want to find the Lord, Sometimes you have to go through Mary to find Jesus. I think of St. Louis de Montfort and how he recommended that we go to Jesus through Mary. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he presented her in a very loving way. And what he did in my life was um, he kind of, um, I like to say, made me feel very guilty for what I did to the Blessed Virgin Mary in the sense that uh, my father, for example, I am one of 12 children, and there's seven boys in my home. And there's many times that we did things that made our mother cry. And so those days that we made our mother cry, we knew that we were going to get it. And when my dad came home, he'd pull us into, uh, you know, one of the rooms and say, okay, young men, you've made your mother cry. 
you need to go and apologize to her and to do a nice little good deed for your mother to make up uh, kind of in reparation for that. And Fulton Sheen kind of took me on a similar path in that he would hold up a crucifix and he would say, no, look at the crucifix. Look what your sin did um, to our Lord. Your sin caused our Lord to die on the cross. And who's at the foot of the cross? His mother. You've caused my mother to cry. And you've brought her a great sorrow because she lost her son, her only son. Now, how does that make you feel? How does it make you feel? And I started to go, I'm starting to feel guilty here. And he's there, you should, you should. <laughs> and let's start with an apology. How would you apologize to the Blessed Virgin Mary for your role in putting our Lord and Savior on the cross? And uh, I know when I finally apologized and kind of brought myself to that realization that, yeah, I did wound our Lord and his mother. Boy, my relationship with both our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary improved a great deal because now I had relationship. I could understand, um, yes, this is an interactive um, <laughs> journey where, you know, she's helping me. Uh, again, Fulton Sheen said, you want to become a better Christian? Uh, well, the Blessed Virgin Mary helped form me for all of those years. So go to her and she will help you become like me. And so we need to go to Mary. We need to go to Mary. And so mm. uh, these are all little lessons that Fulton Sheen, um, he kind of brought me along the long road but he got me there to the final destination. And so uh, that's what he does in his books. He, he reasons with us. He reasons with us. Um, and again, talks about a story, uh, a situation in life, but then brings our Lord into the conversation. So, Yeah, and does it so well. I mean, um, I think anyone who's listening to this podcast, I'm sure that you are interested in learning more about Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. So if this person who's listening to the podcast now and thinks, you know, I'd love to learn more, what do you think would be some initial steps for them to get their feet wet, so to speak? Right. Okay. So the first thing I try to do to people is that um, plug them into some of Fulton Sheen's television shows and some of his audio recordings. And you can go on the web and watch Fulton Sheen and listen to Fulton Sheen for hundreds of hours, all at that favorite price that I love. It's absolutely free. So um, I actually even set up a website called bishopsheentoday.com. So, cause I thought we need Bishop Sheen today. So when people log into bishopsheentoday.com, I have the website set up there where I have a hundred YouTube videos, um, just all the links. So you can watch season one, season two, season three. Like you can watch all of the years of Fulton Sheen until uh, for hours and hours and start to just enjoy him uh, the way he interacted with souls. Um, and then, of course, his um, radio addresses, I replay them on my podcast and I have, um, you know, almost 10 years of my radio show there uh, on the website. So I say, listen to him, listen to his uh, talks, download them for free off my website, put them into your uh, iPad, uh, you know, all your different different devices, and start listening to the wisdom of Sheen. And then if you're a reader, I try to say to people, uh, start reading some of his smaller books uh, that will appeal to you. Um, I made it easy. The two anthologies that I put together, Lord Teach Us to Pray and The Cries of Jesus from the Cross, uh, The Cries of Jesus from the Cross is seven of his little books in one. And so I say, don't buy seven $12 books, buy one book <laughs> for $18.95, and um, you've got a great Sheen library there just in the wisdom on the seven last words. And the same is true with his books on prayer. Uh, I put five of his little books on prayer into one book. And so um, uh, to me, the key is have a relationship with the cross and the power of the cross and develop the good holy habit of prayer. And um, I, then you're set. Then you've got a good foundation. Uh, yes, Fulton Sheen wrote books on communism and war and science. And there's stuff there that maybe is not even interesting to some people. Uh, but he wrote a lot of books on happiness and God's love. 
and the sacraments. And so there's something for everyone. But I always say you need to start with the basics. And our faith has the basics of God so loved the world that he came to save us and he had to go through the cross. So let's get to know the cross. Um, and then, of course, let's get to know him. And Jesus was true to his promise. He said, I will not leave you orphan. And so he is present in every tabernacle all over the world. He's there. And we have the opportunity to come and visit with him and to spend time, uh, you know, praying um, in many of the churches that sadly aren't always open the way we want them to be. I remember when I was a child, the churches were always open. Um, you could, there was never a locked door in a church. You could walk in and spend time with the Lord. So uh, again, people have said so many times that when you go to a Catholic church and you just sit there for 10, 15, 20 minutes, there's a peace that is there. And that is our Lord who is present in every tabernacle all over the world. So again, I try to just say to people, plug into those two, uh, you know, touch tones, those, the message of the cross, the message of the Eucharist, and of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And you got, you got a good starting point there, good starting point. So, uh, and again, what is that? Repetition, repetition, practice, practice, practice. Um, and again, we never reach perfection to the other side, till we get to the other side. But still, let's try to be perfect as uh, Jesus instructed us. Be perfect as the Father is perfect. Become holy as the Father is holy. So uh, we got our work cut out for us, but Fulton Sheen will help us, uh, you know, help us to get there. Yeah, he sure will. I, I, you know so much about him, and I'm sure that it's a joy for you to have learned so much and you know that you're carrying on his legacy. And you know, in my opinion, that's a very important thing to do for a saintly person like him to carry on that legacy so that other people can know about him. Um, you were talking about the cross and I just wanted to backtrack if I could, because I remember reading something about his life that at the end of his TV career, uh, that he did really get a taste of, of that cross and how he overcame it. So I, I wonder if you could just share, as we're heading into the end of the program for people who are going through the cross right now, a little bit about what happened in that time of his life. Right. Um, I think, again, he the tensions that were happening in New York City, um, you know, the professional jealousy, and, um, you know, his show got po pulled in the sense of mm. he was 30 million people were watching each week. Um, he was raising uh, millions and millions of dollars for the propagation of the faith because, um, again, there was a good revenue stream in television. And when that got pulled away, um, you know, he started to see, wow, there's a price I'm paying here for ruffling feathers. And actually, it was during that time that he wrote the book, Life of Christ. And Life of Christ is a beautiful collection mm -hmm. of, I'd like to say, Alexio Divina, where Fulton Sheen unpackages the scriptures as they pertain to Christ. And he takes us on a beautiful spiritual journey. And so that's what he found his consolation in those dark moments where he was, um, of course, maligned, uh, probably looked at and judged incorrectly. Uh, he just went to the Lord and took his pen and penned this beautiful book, Life of Christ. And even today, that is still one of uh, the most cherished books that Fulton Sheen ever wrote that uh, highly recommended that people lead, read Life of Christ. Uh, but he knew that our Lord uh, endured the suffering to the very end. You know, and this is why he preached so passionately about our Lord's passion, his cross, and of course, then his resurrection but it has to go through the cross. And physically, his health, um, he had a heart condition, uh, suffered a great deal um, in those years in New York City. And so, um, you know, he knew what physical suffering was. And um, again, he was affirmed towards the end of his life when he, of course, met the Holy Father when he came to visit and John Paul II, uh, they had this beautiful embrace. It was October of 1979, the year that he died. And the Holy Father held Fulton Sheen and said, you are a loyal son of the church. You have written and spoken well of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so it was important for him to hear it from the Holy Father. 
uh, that beautiful affirmation, uh, because Fulton Sheen was a Peter. Um, his name is not Fulton J. Sheen, but Peter John Sheen. So he was born mm -hmm. and baptized mm. Peter John Sheen. And um, of course, he was called Fulton and took the name Fulton later on in life, but uh, still. Uh, but to finish wow. on the cross, our Lord, um, again, I'd like to say, gave him a tribute mm. in the sense of uh, the day that our Lord, that Fulton Sheen died, uh, they found him in his private chapel. And there they found him in front of the tabernacle. And uh, yet the shadow of the cross that was in his apartment was, um, you know, uh, upon him too. So he died in the presence of the Lord in the shadow of the cross. And uh, so had a perfect ending, I like to say. Um, mm. He went out well. He went out well. <laughs> um, I think that's what I want. I, I'd love to you know, die in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm thinking if I have to go out, I want it to be on a Saturday uh, after <laughs> confession, after mass, uh, just all ready, and then, um, you know, quietly just fall asleep and uh, do it that way, you know? So um, we'll see. We'll see if the Lord answers my prayer. Uh, and oh, I want to be 80-something too, maybe 90-something, but uh, I got work to do still. <laughs> I feel like you I got do. work to do. You do. <laughs> you do, Alan. And how old was was Archbishop Fulton Sheen when he died? Eighty four. He okay. was eighty four years old. So, mm. yeah. There's that Bible verse that says uh, four score and twenty or something. That if you get to eighty, you're doing okay. So, um, I think I just want to want to get into that bracket if I could. So, uh, we'll see. But I'm happy whatever God's will is. Um, we'll see. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't like to talk about my death. Okay, uh, but I know that <laughs> yeah. I. I, I was made for, and this is one thing I try to share all the time mm. is that remember we were made for eternity. So get comfortable with it. Get comfortable with it. That, yeah, the body is 70 years, 80 years, but the soul is forever. Mm -hmm. The soul is forever. So get used to that relationship that you are made for eternity. So let's work towards it. St. Teresa, the little flower, uh, she got it at a young age. She knew that she was going to spend eternity with our Lord. And she says, I'll spend my time on earth doing the little things well for the love of God, but I will spend my heaven trying to do good on earth. So uh, if, I think if you get that in your head, life is good. It takes away a lot of the worry um, if you realize God has a plan for me, and that plan is an eternal plan. Uh, he wants us to be with him forever uh, in, in the joy of his company and the saints. So uh, hopefully, again, if we're sowing hope today on this program, <laughs> Uh, we're going to sow that hope of eternal life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints forever and ever. Amen. 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 Alan, Thank you, you Alan. It's so such, oh, I always love having you as a guest on the show. Thank you. And I know you're going to be a guest also. I want to announce this on this podcast that you will be a guest on Journeys in Faith on Fiat Ministry Network on Friday, January 15th. So awesome. keep an eye on Fiat Ministry Network and also on Patchwork Heart Radio. Yeah, absolutely. And Alan, I want to thank you so much for spending time with us today. And I also want to let people know that uh, you did a wonderful series for the Discover Your Mission series for Fulton Sheen, and it's going to air in January. So uh, people who are subscribed to that series, uh, look forward to Alan's uh, great uh, presentations, and we we typically ask speakers for three presentations. Fulton Sheen has so much, and he has so much to share that Alan did four presentations for us. Oh, so there's a good. bonus one for everybody this month. Uh, so so go ahead and check that out. We're so excited about that, Alan, and thank you for doing that for us, and thank you for spending time with us tonight. This has been great. Yeah, it really has. Yeah, uh, it is my pleasure because I mean we're talking about. Um, my favorite subject, which is God. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. and our eternal destiny. It's, um, again, this is a conversation. And I think we started off well when we said, unless souls are saved, nothing mm -hmm. is saved. Mm -hmm. And we need to have that conversation. Amen. About saving souls. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome You're stuff. Welcome. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in tonight to uh, Sowing Hope. And uh, we hope that you'll join us again on uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday. Uh, and until then, from all of us at the St. Raymond Anatas Foundation, Patchwork Art Ministry, and Fiat Ministry Network, I'm Bill Snyder. Keep beating to your Catholic heart and sowing hope into those hearts.
Thanks for listening to this episode of Sewing Hope on Patchwork Heart Radio. For more information about this podcast and our ministries, visit our websites, patchworkheart.org and andesantis.com. You can also follow and interact with us on Twitter at PWH Ministry or andesantis2.